Greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. finds hope? From what does its basis form? How can I tell when I have it, or where it is gone when to it I'm no longer holding on? Why does it seem as though circumstances produce it captive? If I don't feel it, does it still stay active? Whenever I'm seeking it, and I consider it can't be found, should I worriedly ask myself, is hope something that can be bound? Bye. 
past those others in the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those who whom God is pleased. had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Foretold in the prophecies of old centuries before, at last, the God of all hope had arrived. Here, now, for everyone. The light of the world, the light of all creation, the light who could never be extinguished. With the utmost humility and transcendent love, our Creator reached down, offering Himself as the greatest gift we could ever receive. True redemption, a never-ending relationship with the Father, and the opportunity to become a son or daughter of Almighty God. Hope did not stop at the manger. Hope spread to the darkest places it gathered and moved, collecting and embedding peace and joy, and at its heart, truth. Shining, bursting out to each corner of the world, reflecting something new, a light for everyone. Bigger, better, and more beautiful than what anyone who encountered it could ever ask for or imagine. Fully in view. Hope spreads. Yes, there is something to hope unbound. A significance against what on earth alone is found, far greater than anything I by myself saw. There was a man who graciously brought meaning beyond feeling, a measure to which we each belong, created and formed by a love so strong. Something to hold on to, never once confined with intentionality so tender, his perfect plan for all design. There was a man who embodied hope. I brought the news that would bring great joy to all people. The light of life, the light of all creation. Hope is Jesus Christ eternally defined. What a powerful way to celebrate and remember not only that Jesus came to be with us, but that he became one of us. Huge shout out to Nathaniel Hall and the creative team for that video and wonderful 
experience. I love some of the things that that video celebrated, that Jesus is the greatest gift that we could ever receive, that he is meaning beyond feeling. Now, we live in a world with lots of feelings, and so that's actually good news, that he is meaning beyond all those feelings, that he's someone that we can hold on to, that Jesus is hope himself. If we are followers of Jesus, the amazing reality is that we get to be carriers of hope. We receive him freely, and then we can give him away. And this is why that's important, that Jesus is the answer to every single problem that you face. Every single problem. I know that's a bold statement. He doesn't just have the answer. He is the answer. I was recently taking a lift to the airport, and it was about 5.30 a.m. And you know, you think those early flights are a really good idea until you have to get up at 4 a.m. to get there. So I was a little bit tired, but I was sitting in the back seat, and I looked over at the driver, and I started to be filled with compassion. And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? Like, what, what are you doing? What does she need right now? And, and you know, there's all kinds of things that I could think of that she would need, but I was kind of surprised by the, the thought I had in my head from Jesus. He said, my hope. She needs my hope. And as we continue to drive, I, I had this sense, like God often speaks to me this way. It's, it's more like a, a really deep knowing, almost like a, a knowing in your gut. And I, I, I sense that this need for hope was connected to some sort of pain that she was dealing with, like pain in her body, like a chronic pain. And, you know, something you need to know about me is that I love to pray for people. And when you're a carrier of hope, you get to give hope away. And so as we pulled into the airport, I said, hey, this might seem like a strange question, but do you have any pain in your body? And she was like, oh yeah, I have pain everywhere, especially in my neck and in my back. And it's actually been for years and years. It's chronic pain. I've been to doctors. They can't do anything about it. I mean, she actually explained a lot about what's going on. And I was like, wow, I, I am so sorry to hear this. How, how, how bad is it? Like how severe is it right now in this moment? She goes, well, you know, since this car ride, it's actually been a little lower. It's only at, at a seven right now. Now, you know when someone can just rattle off a number like that? They've, they've had a lot of conversations with doctors. And so I said, well, do you mind if I see your hand for a moment? She's like, sure. And so I took her hand, and I felt compelled to say this. I said, you're going to start to feel a warmth on your neck and your back and all the places that you describe pain. And that warmth is actually going to increase on your body right now, and all that pain is going to go. Now, that was a pretty bold thing to say. And so I just checked in. I said, how are you feeling? She goes, there's like tingling all over my body right now, like tingling. And it's, it's, it's like increasing in all the places and all, all the pain is gone. And she's like, wow, I, I can't believe this is happening. Man, I'm going to have to tell my husband to hold my hand like this. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I said, well, do you know what's happening right now? And she's like, no. I said, this is Jesus. Jesus is healing you right now. He loves you so much. And he's healing your pain that you've been dealing with for years and years. And she's like, wow. Well, I can believe that. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's cool. And then she began to open up. She goes, you know, man, it's not just the, the pain in my body. Like, man, there's all these situations that me and my husband have been going through, all of this. And she started to like, explain the the despair and the hopelessness that was going on in her life. And I said, you know, when I was sitting back here, I asked Jesus, I said, what do you need right now? And he said, hope, that he wants to give you his hope. And so do you you mind if I just pray over you right now? And she goes, "I, I would love that. And so I just prayed a very simple prayer, and I released God's peace and released his hope. And and she began to experience him like in a tangible way. And she was like, man, I I just feel so much better. I just, I did not expect this this morning. And I was like, I didn't expect this either. I mean, I'm tired. It's early. (laughs) 
She goes, I feel so much better. And I said, Jesus loves you so much. You see, hope is here. Hope is Jesus Christ. And we not only get to be carriers of that hope, we get to give him away. I think her experience is what many of us experience. You know, maybe there's people in this room, maybe you in this room, you're dealing with pain in your body, like chronic pain, and you don't know what to do about it. Maybe it's, it's not there, but it's chronic pain in your finances, right? Or maybe there's a hopelessness or despair in a, in a relationship, especially this time of year. I know many of you in this room, and I've heard some of the hard situations that seem hopeless, and hope seems elusive. And when you start to lose hope, you're not even sure how to get it back again. Like, what do you do when you don't see the breakthrough? So I think when you ask a question like that, we need to understand what we're talking about. And really, what is hope? How do we define it? Well, it's a very simple explanation. It just means to wait with expectation. Uh, one person put it this way. It's like a hunter waiting for its prey. Now, I know you might not like hunting, so I just want you to imagine a spider or a snake coming towards you, and then you might like hunting a little better. But the point is, is that it's active. Hope is active. It's not passive. And if you've been around during our series this month, we define hope with this Hebrew word, kava, and it means to wait with tense expectation. And then it uses this analogy it's like a, that's tense expectation over there, right there. Can, can you hear that? I hear it. And it uses this analogy of a rope, you know, pulled with tension. I don't know if you guys have seen one of these before, maybe last year, last January. Well, January's coming, right? <laughs> that it's waiting with tense expectation. And I don't know about you, but this definition does not feel very hopeful. It kind of hurts a little bit. It's hard. But it's very realistic. See, sometimes you can feel so much tension in the waiting that it's really challenging to stay in that place. It's hard to stay in that place. There's a little bit of pain involved. But see, there's one more piece to this definition that I think is crucial for us to understand. See, it's not just one rope. See, hope is several ropes bound together, intertwined. See, hope is not just waiting for something. It's that you're waiting with someone. See, biblical hope is based on a person, and his name is Jesus. And to hope is to wait with him, to wait with Jesus. We are intertwined with him in the tension. And you know, I can just tell you, this really hurts my arms. It doesn't break very easily. See, hope is a person. I'm going to put this down now because this hard. That's hard to do. Hope is a person. I loved my driver's answer when I explained who was healing her. I said, you know, that's Jesus. And she, without hesitation, was like, well, I can believe that. Hope is a person. And then she began to share some of her story, and you could tell that she had been waiting for a very long time, that she was discouraged, that this felt like a heavy burden. It was almost like her heart was sick. See, we know that verse in Proverbs Proverbs 13, it's a kind of a famous one. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. See, there's an anguish in deferred hope. There's like an ache. Some of you are well acquainted with that. And I could sense this in her life. I could sense this ache in her life. And I, I, feel, I could feel this compassion that Jesus wanted to do something about it. Now, what I love about this verse is this is only the first part. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Now, what's cool about this second part of the verse, 
is that there's some foreshadowing of Jesus. But when I looked at the Hebrew, I love to look up like the Hebrew, the interlinear concordance. I kind of nerd out on that a little bit. And it changed the word order. And it made me look at it a completely different way. It didn't say, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. It said, but a tree of life is a desire fulfilled. Like the meaning didn't change, but what it was foreshadowing is that the tree of life is what fulfills your desire. So who is this tree of life? Well, Jesus tells us in a really profound way in John 15, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do Yeah, that's a big, bold statement. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. What are you wishing for? What is a desire in your heart? What is that longing in your heart? Do you see what Jesus is saying here? Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Woo! That is a radical promise. See, what do we do when hope is deferred? When, when it feels bound up, it feels lost, unattainable, when you just can't wait anymore? We abide. He says, remain in me. Become connected to me. We go to the source. We go to the tree of life. He is the vine. We are the branches. See, we go to Jesus because he is where our desires are fulfilled. Jesus is the tree of life of life. And in Jesus, we have everything we could ever need. I love how the prophet Isaiah prophesies about Jesus. I love it because he calls Jesus several things. I want to read this. This is really famous during this time of year. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. Well, I like that one. Lord, let our government rest on your shoulders. That would be awesome. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. That means it's eternal. That means it's not going to run dry, run out. It will never end. What is this saying about Jesus? Well, it's saying he's the mighty God, that Jesus is God. It means that any situation in your life, in the world's life, that feels out of control, when maybe when you feel attacked or struck down, you go to the one who is mighty God. It means he's bigger than any of your problems. It means that he is Lord, that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is, oh, you know it, that's right. We like to say it this way around here. He is large and in charge. And let me just tell you, as a follower of Jesus, we got to be reminded of this all the time. We do. We forget. We get overwhelmed. But he is mighty God. We have to remind ourselves of that. Now, maybe you're here and you don't follow Jesus. You're not sure even how to receive this hope. Well, Jesus actually did all the hard work. He went to the cross. He took sin, shame, condemnation. He took all of that upon himself on the cross to, to remove every, any possible thing that could separate you and him. And all you need to do to receive that hope, to become a carrier of hope, is say, Jesus, you are Lord. You are mighty God. I'm not Lord of my life. You are Lord of my life. Jesus, you are Lord. See, he is mighty God. But he's also, I love this, wonderful counselor. You ever been in a situation where you don't know what to do or you don't know what to say? Maybe it's kind of tense. Or or maybe it's not tense, but you just need direction. You don't even know where to go. Well, you go to the one who is wonderful counselor. Now, it's important to understand that this doesn't mean that Jesus is your therapist. I mean, he'll listen to you, and it's good to go to a therapist and process things. It also 
doesn't mean that Jesus is a great advice giver, although he does have good advice. See, this word counselor, the connotation of counselor is like a war strategist. He actually goes over the battle plans with you. Because see, there's another enemy on the field, and this enemy leads the kingdom of darkness. It's the kingdom of God, kingdom of darkness. And what he does is goes, tries to steal, kill, and destroy every part of your life. And so we go to our war strategist, our counselor, and we say, what do I do about this? Then he has the plans, and he goes, sometimes he'll say, you know what? This is not your battle. I'm going to fight your battle. Stop trying to fight your battle. You stay back here. I'll fight it for you. See, we need the mighty, the wonderful counselor. He knows the best strategy for everything you need to decide in your life. But Isaiah also calls him a really powerful title, the Prince of Peace. Now, I'll, I'll be real. I know that many of us deal with anxiety. Just a couple weeks ago, I, I was really overwhelmed with anxiety. I didn't know what to do. I've prayed with many people that have, are all of a sudden having panic attacks all the time. I, I know, I even sensed that some little ones in here are having nightmares and night terrors. And I know when many of us think of 2024, you know, election year, woohoo. <laughs> We don't think woohoo. We have some intense worry going on. What do we do with that? Well, we go to the one who is Prince of Peace. You know that word peace? It's not just calmness. It means shalom. Shalom is like wholeness, completeness, healed, set free, delivered. That's, he is the prince of that. He, is, he has rulership. He has the authority to give out that shalom. See, when we understand who Jesus is, when we can abide in who he is, this is how hope is restored. If you wonder how to get your hope back, you go to the source because hope is a person. You know, when I was with that Lyft driver, I'll just be honest, I actually wasn't feeling very hopeful that day. I had some several things that previous week that were pretty discouraging, and I was kind of doubting some things. And I know when you're tired, you tend to doubt a little more, but I wasn't in a very hopeful place. But you know what? I wasn't giving away my hope. I was giving away him. And when I gave him away, and I saw what he did, I actually started to receive hope. It's almost like it's better to give than receive. Like I walked into that airport, I'm like, Gosh, I don't even feel discouraged at all. That was amazing, Lord. Like, look at you. See, I was filled with hope when I gave him away. So my encouragement for you all as we celebrate Jesus, as we celebrate hope with us, is two things. That you would abide in him, that you would intertwine your life with his life that you would wait with tense expectation, that you would invite him into your life and realize that you're a carrier of that hope, that he lives in you. And that when you walk around in your everyday life, even when you don't feel it, he is meaning beyond feeling, that you would give him away, that you would release the tension and just give away the hope. See, hope didn't stop in a manger. Hope spread. And hope wants to be released through your life. Now, as we move into worship, I know some of us are dealing with some things that have kind of stolen your hope. And as we move into worship, I just want to take a moment. And if you need an infusion of hope in your life, where it feels lost, or it feels bound up, you're, you're not really sure what's going on. Would you be so bold as it's just to stand up because I just want to pray over you? Thank you for being brave. I believe something that 
Jesus wants to do something significant. I want you just to put your hands out. I know some of you are still sitting and you're like, I ain't standing up. But that's okay, you can put your hands out. I'm just saying there's something in the activity of setting yourself apart, saying Jesus. So put out your hands like you're gonna receive a gift. Close your eyes. And I say, Jesus, right now, I thank you for the free gift of hope. And Holy Spirit, release that hope right now. Some of you are going to start to feel a warmth just come over your body. And I bless that, Lord. I say to increase it. Thank you, Jesus. Fill them with hope. Thank you, it's a gift, Lord, that all, they can't work for it, they can just receive it. And you can just stay in that place. I wanna invite everyone else to stand if you're able. We're gonna worship Jesus. And so Jesus, I thank you right now that you are meaning beyond feeling, Lord, that you're the greatest gift that we could ever receive. And we fix our attention and our affection on you, Jesus and say you are worthy to be praised, that your name is Jesus. You're the name above all names. We thank you, Lord, in your mighty name. Amen.